Welcome to Aero TV's daily update from EAA AirVenture Oshkosh for Tuesday, July 29, 2008. If Tuesday's AirVenture highlights had a theme, it might be aerospace fantasies come to life. Given the level of excitement over the Martin jetpack exhibited by executives of the Experimental Aircraft Association, it was a little surprising to see them caught off guard by the size of the crowd that gathered in Aero Shell Square to see it. Thank you for this incredible show of enthusiasm to show aviation innovation in the making. We heard uh, somewhere that there was going to be a jetpack demonstration on Aeroshell Square. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for being here for that. And now for the unveiling of the jetpack. We've now got something that you can strap on, you can fly around for up to 30 minutes. Uh, we've got something now that I suppose is what we call our newborn baby. And it's very analogous to the famous Wright Brothers story. You know, that 12 seconds at, at Kitty Hawk were famous and pivotal. You know, we've done our, our Wright Brothers moment. We've done our 12 seconds proving flight. We've moved on from there. We're now flying figure eights. We're flying circuits or, or as you call them here in America, uh, patterns and hovering. And we're, but it's still a newborn baby. And although this is our 11th prototype, next year when we come back, what you'll see will be, have, be more capable than this and we'll build on the future, just like the EAA does. Now what we're going to do today is Harrison's going to strap in. We've got issues obviously with crowd and safety and, and all that sort of stuff. So we're going to do a straight hover and we've been given permission to do that as long as we hold them down. So we're going to do that now. Amazing. It's, it's a feeling of lightness and you're just floating there. Every time I, I suppose I lost heart and I, I wanted to stop on it, it would never get out of my head. And, uh, and I, I, you know, you get blocked by a problem and you think about it for a few weeks and then you, then you solve the problem and move on, you move on. I think many of the home builders that are here today know that, uh, you know, many of them here have worked 5, 10 or 15 years on their aircraft. Uh, so I think they can understand that, that there is you know, a dream that keeps you going every day. We expected a couple of hundred people uh, and that they would all get a very good view. Uh, in the end, Aeroshell Square was packed and, and the people at the back literally couldn't see anything. So uh, we're going to try and arrange to see if we can do another demonstration for them later in the week. Today, there is an affordable, high performance, easy to own and easy to operate, very light jet designed with you in mind. Far less expensive than any other twin-engine jet to buy, it is also the least expensive to own and operate. It is the Eclipse 500, the jet that's easy to buy, easy to fly, and fun to own. The jet for you. Welcome back to Aero TV's daily update from EAA AirVenture Oshkosh. Tuesday was the 50th anniversary of the founding of NASA in 1958, and the agency is celebrating with special displays at AirVenture. NASA Administrator Michael Griffin appeared on Tuesday and very directly countered a recent storm of criticism about his agency. Among his comments, Griffin said, quote, This is rocket science. If we knew how to do it, it wouldn't be exploration, unquote. One day after unveiling their next private spaceflight mothership, White Knight 2, in Mojave, California, Bert Rattan and Sir Richard Branson appeared together in person at AirVenture's Honda Pavilion to make a stunning announcement. I do think it's very practical to fly the Spaceship 2 system right here at Oshkosh and to make six new astronauts right here during the evening air show. Uh, <laughs> Beyond that, when we begin commercial flight, one of the first places we're going to come with the touring system, because we plan to take the system, as Bert was saying earlier, to Sweden to fly into the Aurora Borealis. We plan to take it to places like the UK, Spain, Australia, and other countries in the future from our home base in New Mexico. But the first place we'll bring it commercially is going to be Oshkosh outside. <laughs> Actually, one, one thing, why not we just have a show of hand. If, 
we could guarantee you a return ticket. <laughs> uh, um, and if you could afford it, um, we, how many of you would want to go into space? <laughs> anyway. You know, this is so no, well, that's fascinating because I remember I first mentioned the fact that it's maybe possible for one of us little home-built guys to build a spaceship in 1994 here at Oshkosh in a, in a, in a forum. And uh, I was told very politely uh, by EAA management that, uh, Bert, our, our members aren't interested in <laughs> spacecraft. <laughs> uh, my company now has more than 300 employees, and a lot of those folk came right out of this audience. The types of people that we meet and see at Oshkosh, the types of people that we see the passion in their eyes. And when I walk on the stage here and when I talk to you, this audience has more passion than any other audience I've ever talked to. And that's why I love coming back. Here. And uh, this. This industry, as we get into the manufacturing, the production of spaceships, the production flight tests, the licensing, all the requirements for operations, because it'll be flown in many spaceports around the world. These guys are even planning on flying it within the Aurora Borealis. And uh, that's going to take uh, an enormous amount of people that have the kind of skills that you do, the kind of dedication the fact that only a small percentage of people have the ability to stick to it and go out and build your own airplane and fly your families in it. If you've done that, you're in the top 98% of folk who are the kinds of people that you would look to to help in this new industry. So that means out of, out of 100 resumes that you get, you grab two there and you've got a real good chance that those are going to be good folk. You are that, the Oshkosh people who succeed and come here and enjoy and have the passion of the stuff that happens here every year. You're the ones that are going to help us grow this industry. Sunny or cloudy, rainy or bright, Day or night. The future of flying is now clearly in sight. Garmin SVT. Synthetic vision technology. I've just watched Rick Searfoss take the first public flight of the Bridenstein DKNY rocket racer powered by a flawless X-Core engine. It's been an amazing day. It's been a great day. It is a sign of the future. And for all the kids out here who come to Oshkosh to wish and dream and hope a little bit, well, now they can dream even higher and of far greater things. What better venue to fly and show this off to the public are you going to get than Oshkosh? So it was this great combination of the great support, resources, vision from Rocket Racing League, uh, from Bridenstein and DKNY to pull the resources together to do this, to to uh, make this vehicle, then the technical expertise with x to put it together, the operational expertise that I bring to the table working with the uh, rocket engineers uh, to figure out how we can do this safely and still show it off. Uh, this flight was exactly the way I like them. It was boring as good. It went according to the profile, flown as briefed. You can't act, ask for something better. At the same time, so they tell me, it looked pretty good from the ground. My background is almost exclusively military. I've got some light aircraft and soaring experience. Uh, but what attracted me to this project, of course, was the space connection, the potential to bring my background and skills to bear to help uh, this team get to space. But to be here at this, this cradle of, uh, of home-built aviation, the home of EAA at, at Oshkosh, is just, you know, it's a dream come true. Stand by for Friday and Saturday, because uh, weather permitting, <laughs> it will uh, be even better. A highlight on Wednesday's schedule will be the expected arrival of the Cirrus light jet, the Vision SJ50. Join us again tomorrow for the next edition of the Aero TV Daily Update from EAA AirVenture Oshkosh.